gorgeous Olga's here welcome welcome and today we on this video we're talking about how to get over a breakup this is the question that came in from from a couple of people in my community and I, I've been asked to make a video a tapping video on that before we dive in I wanted to tell you that so those three things that you want to do them in order and the truth is when you are going through a breakup it's obviously a hard time whether you're the one who initiated it or your partner is the one whose idea was to break up and I'm kind of talking from the experience because I went through a divorce last year which is only um, six months ago from from the moment that I'm making this video um, a little bit more than that it was nine months ago actually and so I can relate to a lot of feelings and stories that we create when we go through this process but the first thing that I want you to do guys and the first thing that will help you clearing out and moving past it and creating new scenarios in your life is just noticing any stories that you're creating around it. Because what happens so often, something bad happens to us and we have certain feelings around it. Instead of just feeling feelings, we'll create a story. We'll write the whole uh, book about it, right? And the story usually goes like this, well, I'm not good enough, or I've messed up, or I've done something wrong, or something is, is you know naturally wrong with me at the core almost, right? And so notice what stories you are created. Are you saying that you're not lovable? Are you talking about or you have a limiting belief that you'll never find a person who love you for who you are so you had to settle? Because here's the truth. It doesn't matter if he broke up with you or you broke up with him. You don't want to be with someone who don't want to be with you, right? You really, really don't. And, and you probably understand that logically, right? But emotionally what's coming up for a lot of people is I'm not loved right the abandonment the rejection the loneliness a lot of loneliness so first thing was to notice what story you created and what feelings coming up the second thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna tap on it because here's something interesting with tapping versus talking I actually go to a counselor occasionally that my, my daughter going through some treatment in the hospital and, and we have free counseling there and what I notice is that if I talk about things that bother me without tapping, I make things worse. Let me say that again. If you go into your story and you don't do anything specific to release it, very often you will re-traumatize yourself. Not always, but very often you will. So tapping as you're talking about this, as you're feeling those feelings, as you're being aware of that, actually changes how you feel. And then the next part, the third step that we're going to talk about will fall on the ground to where you can get this information, you can implement it. Because what happens very often, and you can probably relate to this, you'll go to someone who'll give you really good advice, but you feel so crappy and so lonely and just so out of whack, you cannot take this advice, even though logically you understand that this is good. But they're telling you something and it totally doesn't go in because you are in that state, you are in trance. So tapping helps you break the state or the trance so you can hear that, right? And, and, and the chances are this, this voices sometimes come from within, you don't even need to have someone to tell you things. And then we'll talk about step three. So you ready? Let's go ahead and do some tapping. So what I want you to do, I want you to think about that breakup. Maybe it's something that happened recently. Maybe that's something that happened a while ago, but it's still on your mind and on your heart. And as you close your eyes and think about that person and look at that person, just notice what's coming up. Is it loneliness? Is it rejection? Is it uh, they don't love me, right? This general feeling that I'm not loved. Or maybe you are creating some other stories about yourself based on that experience or about that person. So whatever it is, we're going to clear it up so you can move on beautifully. And as you do, just go ahead and tap on the side of your hand and repeat after me. Even though the breakup was hard, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I feel a lot of emotional turbulence, sad feelings, negativity. I love and accept myself anyways. Even though I feel lonely and isolated and rejected, I deeply and completely love and forgive and accept myself. That breakup, 
the way the relationships ended, things that he told me, the way how things went. I release and let it go. All the feelings around it, all the emotions around it. It's safe for me to clear it. It's safe for me to move forward. What happened is in the past. And it's safe for me to move on. And even though right now I don't feel like moving on, because I'm very much stuck in the heavy feelings of it, it's safe for me to feel better. Maybe I feel like a victim. Maybe I feel like I've been lied to. Maybe I feel like I'm betrayed. It's safe to release it. My feelings. I'm in control. It's safe for me to let it go. Whenever I feel it, in my chest, in my stomach, in my back, or in other part of my body, I choose to notice these feelings. And I choose not to carry this trauma in me, whether I'm blaming this other person, or I understand that that was the best thing for us to do. I release and let it go. Any aftermath of breakup, all the ways it's still bothering me, all the way it affects my current relationships, my health, my business, I'm committed to this change. I'm committed to clearing it. It's safe for me to let it go. Just let it go. Go ahead and grab your rings and pull around. Breathe in and breathe out and say a word, peace. Beautiful. So as you tap, what you'll notice is it's kind of started to come down. So it's not so heavy and it's not so dense. Now, if you have more over difficult feelings or memories or any specific situation that took place in that relationship, that as you look back, it gives you this shock feeling or, or very traumatic kind of experience. What I recommend to do is called memory switch or memory flip. And it's a beautiful deep process, but very simple process. When you go to that experience and you notice what happened and you notice how you emotionally represent it, right? Because that's how your subconscious holds it. And whatever your subconscious holds it, you may have to project and attract more of it, right? So it's crucial to go back and clear it. And all what you do, you tap on it, you release the feelings, you release the pictures, and you flip it, you actually change it. If you're not familiar with this process, I, I'm actually sending an email on how to do it. There's, there's a little mini training uh, tomorrow, and you can do it yourself, and it's very simple. If you're not on my list, I'll make sure to put a link to where you can opt in so you can get this training. It's totally free, and just like I said, you can totally do it yourself. And all what you do, you go to a specific memory, and you tap on it, and you flip it. And people shared with me that doing just this one thing, changing one core memory around relationships, totally changed the way they feel, right? There was such a revelation, there was such a sense of freedom because they don't carry that affirmation with them. Memories are affirmations. And they're the strongest one because that's the one that have the feelings in it, the pictures, the sensations, the movies, the voices, right? So that's how our subconscious mind holds the representation of what we want to see in the world, right? Because what we carry within, we'll see everywhere. So make sure to grab the training and tap on that. I'll, I'll put the link below and I'll send it out tomorrow. I don't know when, you, when you're watching it. If, you, if you're not watching it tomorrow, just, just go and obtain it and you'll, you'll, you'll get it. And the last thing that I wanted to tell you, and this is something that really, really helped me as I was going through my breakup. And so that's the thing number three, right, that I'm sharing with you is start thinking and start looking for proof that the relationship that you desire are possible. Now, you may or may not be right now in the place where you even wanna start thinking about getting into a relationship. That doesn't matter, we're just gonna play this. Because if you cannot imagine something in your mind, you sure as hell won't be able to manifest it in your life. But what I want you to do, what I encourage you to do, and again, if you not necessarily want to do this right now, just start thinking about it and manifest it in the like tiny bitty parts and pieces, is start looking for proof that it is possible. Now, this is how I applied this point, right, or this strategy. 
So when I was going through divorce, I had two kids, the four and seven year olds. And you know, they're obviously little kids. And I said, you know what, what I want to look for is happy relationships where, you know, somebody got remarried, they had two kids and the second marriage was much, much better, a happier relationship than the first one. And sure enough, I were able to see, gosh, let me see, Natasha, at least three couples, well, four actually couples that created this scenario. So there was a woman who had kid or kids. She married someone in her late 30s, 40s or, or later. And um, there was a man who might or might not have kids and they were just really happy together. Now, of course, I don't know all the details of their interactions and relationships, but those were the people that I knew on a daily basis and I was able to get an insight into their life and ask some questions. What was the second relationship like? What was the second marriage like? And I could see how much understanding is there, how much kindness, and they would share with me that the second time around was just so much easier, that they knew what they were wanted, that they were deliberate about creating it, that the person who was in that relationship was much kinder, more loving, more honest to them than the first relationships. And all what I did is I looked at those people and said, if they can do it, I can do it, right? It's like universe bringing you a menu. I said, hey, what do you want? I said, well, I want this, 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 and that. So I started looking for the proofs and I attracted those people into my life and that's all what I focused on. I never ever focused on being alone or single mom or being by myself or, and you know, the truth is I am a single mom right now, right? I'm not married, but I've started dating pretty fast pretty soon after my divorce and I had a great time with that experience it was so much fun and in May I met someone he's a special friend of mine he's a boyfriend of mine I guess we are in a gorgeous exclusive relationships so the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because it's totally possible and people like this came into my life back then and they shared this message right one of them was my client one of them was my virtual assistant one of them was a parent or a client that I had and they talked about it. Said, listen, it's totally possible. If it's not working, let it go. Heal yourself. Move on. It's time for you to grow up and be happy. So keep on tapping, gorgeous. Don't forget to grab that link to learn how to do the, the memory switch, the, the flip of the memory. You can totally change that. It's a brilliant, brilliant tool. Enjoy the tapping and enjoy your life. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.